Welcome to the Thought Leadership Series featuring interviews with some of the best minds in the industry. Today's special guest is popular platform speaker and best-selling author, Tom Hegna. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and talk show host. In this segment, we're talking about the pensions of the past won't work in the retirement of the future. We're going to address the pensions of yesterday, the retirement plans of tomorrow, and today's sequence of returns, all in Tom's book, Paychecks and Playchecks. Well, welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks, Steve. Great to be here. Tom. You were a major producer. I didn't know that you were going to be an author. What inspired you to write this book, which now has sold over $1 million worth of copies, which I think is what, 1% of all books sold? Something like that, yeah. So I was a reluctant author. I never wanted to write a book. I didn't dream of writing a book, so why to write a book? Well, here's why. Because right now, if your clients were to talk to 50 different financial professionals and ask this very simple question, how should I retire? You know what they're going to get? They're going to get 50 different opinions of what they ought to do. Well, you know what? Retirement's been studied in depth by PhDs all over the world. People like Dr. David Babel of Wharton, Dr. Moshe Malevsky of Toronto, Dr. Menachem Yari of Israel, most recently Dr. Robert C. Merton, a Nobel Prize winner who was just published in the Harvard Business Review. And as an aside, I'd say you should Google Robert C. Merton and Harvard Business Review and re review that article. But I've read their research, and you know what their research says? There are not 50 optimal ways to retire. There's really one optimal way to retire, and that's not my opinion. It's based on math and science, not based on somebody's opinion. Well, let's walk through some of the basic ideas of what's in the book as an introduction, and then I want to get to sequence of returns because that's going to be a major controversial area for most advisors. Yeah, so let me, let me tell you why I decided to write the book. The day I decided to write the book was April 4th of 2011. At the time, I was a senior executive officer for a Fortune 100 company. I woke up on April 4th, 2011, read the Wall Street Journal when the headline read, Fed's low interest rates crack retirees' nest eggs. And this article is all about how these low interest rates are causing all kinds of problems for retirees. And they focused on a guy by the name of Forrest Yeager, 91 years of age down in Port Charlotte, Florida, down to his last $45,000. He had it sitting in a CD earning less than 1%. It was sending about 300 bucks a year. And he says, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to run out of money. And I'm reading this, I want to thank Forrest, you're 91 years of age. Did, did you know a 91 year old can walk into almost any insurance company in America and buy a SPIA, a lifetime income annuity? Do you know what the guaranteed payout rate today on a 91 year old is? 20% a year. His $45,000 would have guaranteed him $9,000 every year. He would have never run out of money. There were other people in this article in their 70s and 80s. They had their money sitting in high yield bonds and stocks. They completely lost their peace of mind. So I said, I got to write a book. And the first chapter is very simply titled, Whatever Happened to Happily Ever After? Mm. Because just like you were saying, retirement used to be a promise. You'd work for a company for 30 years. Then what? They'd hold a party, they'd present you with a gold mm. watch, and they'd give you a guaranteed paycheck every single month for the rest of your life in the form of a pension. Well, guess what? The, less than 19% of Americans have a pension, and 16 of the 19 are government workers, so it's very unlikely that most of your clients will have a pension. You add to that that people are living longer. There's 78 million baby boomers heading into retirement. They need pensions more than, more than ever. They don't have it, and they're living longer. The average 65-year-old male will live to be age 86. The average 65-year-old female will live to be age 89. Now, I said this book is based on mathematical, scientific, and economic facts. Here's my first fact of the morning. Married people live longer than single people. <laughs> now, I have no idea why, but it's a fact. So if you look here, the man's life expectancy is 86. The woman's life expectancy is 89. But as a couple, their life expectancy is 93. And Steve, that's just when half the people die. The other half the people live longer than that. <laughs> So people are living longer and longer and they don't have those guaranteed paychecks mm -hmm. for life. And it all comes down to, I would argue that people know how much money they have. If I had everybody watching this right now, just jot down on a piece of paper, how much money have you saved from birth until today? I'll bet everybody could get that number within five or $600,000, right? But they don't know how much they can get from that money. You know, they think, well, the market's average 12%. Maybe I can get out 12% or 10% or 8%, but you can't. And it's all because of this key issue, the order or sequence of returns. And I know that's what you kind of want to get into. I do, because this is where we're making our mistake, and it's a huge one. Yeah. So the day you retire and start taking money out of a portfolio, average returns really mean nothing anymore. Now, this goes against everything you've always been taught because you think, well, heck, av of course, average returns matter. If I can get 10 percent is better than eight, if I can get eight percent is better than six. But the day you retire, that's not true anymore. It, the average returns don't mean anything in retirement. It's the order or the mm -hmm. sequence. So let me try to give you an example. Here's a guy in 1973. He had one hundred thousand dollars. He invested his money, 50 percent stock, 50 percent bonds for the next 20 
22 years, he averaged 10.1% a year for 22 years, and his $100,000 grew to be worth $846,000. And it doesn't matter if we ran the numbers backwards from 1995 to 1973. Why? Because he still averaged 10.1% a year. He still got a lot of money. That's the way a lot of people think the stock market works. That's the way stockbrokers mm -hmm. think the markets work. And that is the way the markets work when you're a saver and an investor. But that is not how the market works the day you retire and start taking money out of a portfolio. So the next slide I'm going to show you is a guy who also had $100,000 in 1973. He also invested 50% stock, 50% bonds. He also averaged 10.1% a year for 22 years. But the next guy retired in 1973. And his broker mm -hmm. told him he could take out 5% per year. Now, Steve, you're looking at this. How much did he average? 10.1. Mm -hmm. He's only going to take out five, so he's fine, right? Nope, he's dead broke. He completely ran out of money. Now, how do you run out of money if you're averaging 10 and you're only taking out five? It's because average returns don't mean anything in retirement. It's the order or the sequence of returns. Let me show you. The first three years, 1973, 74, 75, the market went down, down, down. Now, if the market goes down the first three years of your retirement, there's not much more I can do for you. You're either going to have to put in more, take out less, or you likely will run out of money. That's this order or sequence of returns. This is a huge issue, and we're going to talk about, in many of the, the, the shows that you and I do, we're going to talk about how to overcome this. There's a lot of plays and planning tactics to do this. Listen, for more information on the sequence of returns on today's retirement and how addressing it can actually impact your practice, just click on the landing page address in the video description. We'll be right back with more from Tom Hagman. A solid web presence has never been more important to the success of your business. Introducing Agent Website Creator, provided by Creative One. Through Agent Website Creator, you can create your own personalized website and have it up and running easily with zero knowledge of programming. Choose from several designs with easy drag and drop customization, get proven lead generation offers, professionally written articles and helpful financial calculators, plus the ability to embed videos, integrate your social media, and more. Update your website anytime and show the world within minutes. The best part? It's hosted for free. To learn more about Agent Website Creator, call your Creative One sales team at 800-992-2642 or visit us online at creativeone.com. In this segment, we're talking about the pensions of the past won't work in the retirement plans of the future. We're going to highlight the money decisions just before and after retirement and address the impact of inflation and deflation on retirement accounts, all from Tom's book, Paychecks and Playchecks. Well, Tom, we're talking about the riskiest time. And I, I have to say, when I first read this from you, I was surprised. This is the most riskiest time for most retirees. I thought it would be, well, the market's been up for a long time and now it's becoming a risk because it's been so high. But you have a completely different take on this. Yeah, so we were just talking about the order of returns. And this is kind of another way of, of looking at it. The red portfolio and the blue portfolio have identical average returns. They're identical. What's the only difference? The only difference is the red portfolio lost money early in retirement. It devastated the retirement. The blue portfolio lost money in later in life. It had much less of an impact. So, Steve, if you were to ask me, when is the riskiest time to invest your money? And most people think it's when you're in your 80s or mm -hmm. something. You don't want to lose money. That is not the riskiest time. The riskiest time in your retirement is right before or right after retirement. Mm -hmm. Because, see, if you lose money right before or right after retirement, it can devastate your whole retirement. So now let's think about it. Where are those 78 million baby boomers out there? They're all in this box right before, right after retirement. This is not a time for baby boomers to lose money. Hmm. And then there's a couple other risks that we need to talk about. One is inflation. Inflation can have a devastating impact on retirement over time. And this shows $1,000 of purchasing power at 4% inflation will be cut by more than 50% in 20 years. It'll be cut by more than two thirds in 30 years. So when you're planning to have income in retirement, we talked about how people are living longer. Mm -hmm. You not only need to have income to age 100 and beyond, you really need to plan to have increasing income to age 100 and beyond. Okay, well, let me ask you something. When you talk about the, in the sequence of returns, I kind of understand that. Yeah. I'm wondering if our advisors and our insurance professionals understand it because this really makes a big difference and I don't want to run out of money. It's the biggest fear in retirement. But inflation can chew into this and corrode our total capital. And so how do I how do I plan for this as a retiree before, a little before or after? I don't want to take these these hits. Yeah. So, you know, we'll get into it in, in further segments of what really the solutions to these are. But but inflation is why you probably should have some money in the market or you should have some money in commodities, or you can even buy inflation protection on some of these income annuities. Mm -hmm. You can um, ladder your income annuities. So one starts here and another starts when you're 65, another starts when you're 70, another starts when you're 75. 
There are a number of ways to address it. But there's even some more risks, Steve. It's not just inflation, which everybody thinks is a big risk. Why? Because the Federal Reserve has printed mm -hmm. so much money. We've literally printed $4 trillion. And normally when you print money, it causes inflation. But the problem is there's no money velocity. See, printing money alone does not cause inflation. If you printed $4 trillion and dug a big hole and buried it, there'd be no inflation. You need money velocity. And you can see here, money velocity has plunged. So there is no money velocity. And so you're not going to see any inflation until you see money velocity pick up. Besides that, there are several huge deflationary pressures. Everybody's worried about inflation. I'm saying there's some big deflationary pressures. The first one is debt. There's record global government debt, over $55 trillion of debt. And if you think about it, all debt is is taking from the future and spending it today. So what I'm telling you is governments around the world have taken $55 trillion of our future and it's gone. Our country is over $18 trillion in debt, climbing at $1 to $2 billion a day. So this is going to reduce growth significantly for decades. Well, many people have been in debt. They've had credit card debt, student loans. What happens when you're paying off your debt? You're not spending or saving money. The paying off of debt is called deleveraging, and governments haven't even started to deleverage. And when they do, they're going to have to raise taxes even more, and they're going to have to cut spending even more, which strangles growth again. And so it's highly deflationary. And the third big trend is demographics. We're getting old. Europe's old. Japan is old. Old people spend a lot less money, and when they're spending less money, it's very bad on growth. And so you've got debt, deleveraging, and demographics that literally could cause deflationary pressures, not inflationary pressures. In your outlook for what you see ahead, let's say for the next 10 years from 2015 to 2025, Deflation, inflation, based I, on these numbers? I see, I can't predict the future. I don't know, but the bond market predicts the future every single mm -hmm. day. And if we look at the U.S. government bond market, the 30-year U.S. government bond is paying a little over 3%. So what is the government bond predicting the odds of inflation and def inflation and hyperinflation is? Almost nothing. So what I think you're going to see is continued low interest rates as far as my eyeballs can see. Everybody thinks the interest rates are going to go up. They might drift up a little, but they're not going to go up significantly, possibly for decades. Now, this is going to affect the way we look at retirement and how we plan for it and how we take money out. I mean, we finally, I've seen public magazines, financial public magazines that are saying, I don't think we can take 4% out any longer. Right. You, you can't take out 4%. Morningstar now says the safe withdrawal rate is 2.8%. Well, where are you going to even get 2.8%? Money market funds are paying almost nothing. CDs are paying less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Where are people going to get this income? We're going to talk about that in a future segment. Well, for more information on the riskiest time to invest and the impact of inflation or deflation and how these topics can help you build out your business, just click on the landing page address in the video description. And for more information on our shows, seminars, and workshops, don't forget to follow us on social media or visit our website. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next time on the Thought Leadership Series. And remember, keep thinking outside the box.